I want to start this off with a little uh, video clip. I owe this to Pastor Von Bush, too. He found this one. This one's for Meet the Parents. Don't worry, I've vetted it carefully. So. <laughs> Kid, your hot buns, hot patooties. Wow, Dina, everything looks fabulous. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, it's such a treat for me to have a home-cooked meal like this. Dinner at my house usually consisted of everybody in the kitchen fighting over containers of Chinese food. Oh, you poor thing. What, there wasn't enough food to go around, Greg? No, there was. We just never really sat down like a family like this. Oh. Greg, would you like to say grace? Oh, uh, well, uh, Greg's Jewish dad, you know that. You're telling me the Jews don't pray, honey? Unless you have some objection. No, 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 I'd love to. Pam, come on, it's not like I'm a rabbi or something. I said grace at many a dinner table. It's... Okay. Oh, dear God. Thank you. You are such a good God to us, a, a kind and gentle and accommodating God. And we thank you, oh sweet, sweet Lord of hosts, for the smorgasbord you have so aptly lain at our table this day and each day by day, day by day, by day. Oh, dear Lord, three things we pray. To love thee more dearly, to see thee more clearly, to follow thee more nearly, day by day. My day. Amen. Amen. Oh, Greg, that was lovely. Thank you, Greg. That was interesting, too. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of silly, but, um, you know, it's one of the great fears of people, right, is having to pray uh, out loud in public. And so, so as you gather at your Thanksgiving tables, I don't know how many of you have ever been put on the spot uh, to ask to do that, to uh, give thanks or to, to say grace or to offer a prayer in front of a group of people. And, uh, and so, what, and that's date, that dates us a little bit if you laughed at that, right? Because you had to know God's spell a little bit, of, you know, because that's what he, he was just quoting words from a, a, a musical uh, at the end. But it was unexpected. Uh, he didn't expect to have to do it. He, he didn't, uh, and, then, and then he had to wing it, you know, as he went along. Ironically, I thought about it as I was talking with Jim about it. I said, it's not a bad prayer. <laughs> really. I mean, what he said, all the things that he said, was, uh, was not a bad prayer. Um, but the context of it, and the being put it on the spot, and then having it be unexpected. And, and that's what really struck me as I thought about this passage. Every time that we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we, it is a thanksgiving. We don't use this term often in our church, but the Roman Catholic Church and Episcopalian Church does use it. They use the word, you know what word I'm talking about? For, the Holy, for Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper? Do you know it? It's a Greek word. Eucharist. Eucharist. And the word Eucharist means thanksgiving. That is its translation. Uh, the word Eucharist means thanksgiving. And it's based on the, on the, on the uh, phrase, on the words, that are in every one of the Holy Communion texts for us. We have it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul in particular says, I passed on to you what I received. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them and said, this is my body, and so forth. And we call that the words of institution of Holy Communion. And it struck me that we are so often, our context, and not badly, not inappropriately, of course, completely um, in, in a, a good setting, we stop at Thanksgiving and give thanks to God. But what is Jesus giving thanks for? Think of the context that he's in. The context in which he is, is in, and within moments, he's going to have to put down an argument between his disciples about who's the greatest. 
Who will be most loyal? Who will hang in there to the very end? He's going to have to touch the hand and talk to the one who will betray him with an intimate, with a kiss to betray him into Jewish authorities. He's washing their feet and Peter completely misunderstands what he's doing. And so there's clumsiness and lack of faith and there's denial and there's argument and there's pride. And in the midst of that, just hours later, Jesus will be handed over to the authorities and begin that odyssey, that journey of horror, physically, relationally, of separation, of isolation and loneliness, and of great physical uh, pain. Jesus enters into his passion. And so that's what lays before Jesus. And so I often think of how hard it is for me to give thanks in all circumstances. How hard it is for me when things just go a little bit awry and I can be frustrated with God. You know, I'm a pastor, doesn't God owe me? You're, I'm a Christian, doesn't God, isn't he on my side? And how easy it is for me to become irritated, frustrated, impatient when things go a little bit wrong. And the context in which Jesus is in just is stunning to me that in each case, each of the gospel writers and Paul mention Jesus stopped and gave thanks. What was he giving thanks for? And how could he give thanks? So it's just three things I want to share with you from this. Three things I pray to see thee more clearly. <laughs> that would have been good. I could have, that would have been interesting to build the sermon on those three points. But anyway, uh, I didn't. So the first thing is this. And I want to give you, we, we did a little history because I think history is appropriate on Thanksgiving. We heard from George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, William Bradford, the signers of the, of the Mayflower Compact. We heard from Moses in Deuteronomy, and we hear from Jesus in the Gospel. It's appropriate for us to look back in history. Thanksgiving should be a day of history. It should be a day where we look back and we see the many, many ways that God has blessed us. Because so often our sin, our brokenness, is to see what God hasn't done for us rather than to acknowledge what God has faithfully and undeservedly and overwhelmingly continued to provide and to grant to us each day of our lives. So the first context that you need to know is, is that it's the Eucharist. It's a meal of thanksgiving. If you didn't know this, the Passover meal in which Jesus is saying those words and when he had given thanks, it was the cup of redemption in the Passover meal, the third cup. When he had given thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to them, took the cup, and gave it to them. This is my body and this is my blood. This is a meal of thanksgiving. This was the Jewish Thanksgiving meal. There were harvest celebrations, but for the Jewish nation, for the Israelites, Passover was thanksgiving. Why? For so many significant reasons, spiritual and physical. On the one hand, God had, in the, in the, in the very title of the word, Passover, God had saved them from the angel of death by instructing them to place the blood of a spotless lamb without defect or blemish to take the blood of that lamb and put it on their doorposts and on the, on the lintel and on the, on the doorposts of their home and the angel of death upon seeing that blood of the perfect lamb would pass over them and preserve them from death. They were celebrating that. They were, being, they were also celebrating four centuries of slavery ending and being released from bondage to the nation of Egypt they were celebrating the promise of having a land which would be theirs forever, an inheritance, a promised land, a land which they would inherit, a land which they would inhabit, a land which would bless them with abundance, a land flowing, as it says, with milk and honey. And they were also celebrating a foretaste of the heavenly banquet which was to come. Because Jewish scholars knew that the land of Israel was not the end but a taste of what would be. Four huge things that they were celebrating in the context of that Passover. And the irony of it is that Jesus himself is that Passover lamb in this meal. And so how does the Passover lamb give thanks? You've heard the old joke, right, about the two turkeys who said, you know, I really give thanks the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, how can the Passover lamb give thanks? on the day in which he will be sacrificed. And so Jesus give thank, gives thanks for this reason. 
Because this day, the context in which it's in, his disciples that are seated around him, they know what this is. They know the history of their nation. They know how God has chosen them out of all peoples, not because they were great and mighty and powerful, but because God loved them and longed for them to be a light to the whole world. And so this was a day of accounting of God's blessings, and we should, of course, do that. We should do it not just on Thanksgiving, but at all times. And also an inventory. It's an inventory, a listing. Here are the many ways which God has blessed us. So the first reason that Jesus can give thanks is that he stops and says, I know how I, I know how God has been faithful in the past. Let me count the ways. And so Jesus gives thanks and reminds his disciples, but is probably also reminding himself for what has been given, what has been promised, what has been fulfilled, and what has been done in the past. That's point one. How can Jesus give thanks in these circumstances? How can you? is to stop and remember what God has done in the past. Secondly, I found this other illustration too that says, uh, you know you've eaten too much if... Nobody overeats on Thanksgiving, do they? No. How about this one? Paramedics bring in the jaws of life to pry you out of the easy boy. The gravy boat your wife set out was a, was a boat. A boat. 12-footer. The potatoes you used set off another famine in Ireland. You received a sumo wrestler application in your email. You take a nap and wake up in July. You getting up off your couch requires a call to the fire department. The doctor says your weight is perfect for someone who is 15 feet tall. And representatives from the Butterball Hall of Fame call twice. Um, this is a meal that Jesus is in. It's not just a ceremony. It's not just a worship service. It is a meal. It is a meal with his beloved. Anyone going to do that today? Going to have a meal with your beloved? Those who are precious to you, who have traveled, who have visited, who, have, who are gathered together. It's a meal with his beloved. One of the lines in the accounting, it's in Luke. It's only in Luke. On the account of the Last Supper of, the, of Holy Communion, of the Lord's Supper, is where Jesus says, and you'll know this, some of you will know this, where Jesus, when he gathers, and he says it this way, and we quote it exactly. <clears throat> when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, and these words just move me, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. What do you think about that? That's a, that is a, that is a, con, that is a I got this contradiction. I am so eager to have this meal with you. There's suffering coming, but this meal I gotta have. This meal I have to have with you because you are my beloved. In spite of the discussions at the table that have happened, in spite of the arguments over who's the greatest, in spite of the pride, in spite of the I will die before I deny you, uh, but despite the hand of his betrayer being right next to him, in spite of all that, Jesus gives thanks and is longing to have a meal with his beloved. One of the great ironies of this, of this passage is that Jesus communes them all. He knows exactly how they will desert and abandon him, how they will deny him, how Judas will betray him, and they each receive from his hand his body and his blood with the promise of the new covenant of the forgiveness of sins, of the promise which can be received and grasped and clung to by faith. The second point is how can Jesus be grateful and thankful in this moment? Because he gives thanks for you. He gives thanks for his beloved. It's interesting, another dumb little joke I found. It's on Thanksgiving Day and the brother and sister are fighting and the one girl runs in and says, I said, Bobby, Bobby hit me. What are you going to do about it? And mom just was so tired and filled with tryptophan or whatever and said, uh, just, it's Thanksgiving Day. Give thanks that he didn't bite you. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because I think Jesus almost says that to us sometimes, thinks that way. I'm thankful they didn't bite me. So they argued, a bit, they argued about who was the greatest and they argued about, and they didn't grasp everything I said. 
but I love them. I will not leave them. I will not forsake them. The love they can return to me, I will receive. The faith, as small as it may be, that they will give and put in me, I will receive. And I will bless it. And so sometimes we are meager in our thanks. Sometimes we are slow in our thanks. Sometimes we are reluctant in our thanks, but Jesus is not. And he gives thanks in this context for you. And then the third and last point is it's a meal that brings benefits for the faithful. As you approach this place, this altar, as you approach this altar with faith, longing to receive Christ himself, because with Christ we receive forgiveness. With Christ we receive grace. Just as certainly as Christ died on the cross, it wasn't a a theory or an idea or a picture or a symbol. Jesus really died. He gives himself really to the faithful to offer the forgiveness of sins. A new covenant for the forgiveness of sins in his body and in his blood. Jesus gives himself, and he knows it is the greatest of all gifts. And so the third thing is, how can Jesus give thanks in these circumstances? Jesus gives thanks for what he knows will be accomplished. And what he knows will be granted to the faithful. All of God's yearning for over 20 centuries to redeem his people, to unite his people once again to himself by faith, is wrapped up, I believe, in that one moment of reflective thanksgiving. And Jesus broke the bread and gave thanks for the gift that was given and for the people, his people, who are his gift as well. He gives thanks even when we are ungrateful. He gives thanks even when we are oblivious to his gifts. Even when we fail to recognize it. Even when we only grasp a small part of the abundance of the outpouring of his love and blessings. Jesus is still thankful. It says it right there. In the midst of their lack of faith, Jesus is faithful. And Jesus is thankful. He does not withhold his gratitude from us. For the opportunity for any of us and all of us to come to him by faith. And this, I believe, is what can allow us to give thanks. Even when others might think that we shouldn't or couldn't. When you may be in a circumstance where people say, how can you be thankful in this moment? For the hurt that you have endured, for the suffering which you have gone through, for the loss which you have experienced. How could you give thanks? And our response is my Savior did. In the midst of his trial, in anticipation of his own death, Jesus gave thanks. For his eyes were fixed upon those seated at the table with him. Not on himself, but on those who shared the meal with him. And now his eyes are fixed upon you. More than 20 centuries later. This makes our blessings of this day of Thanksgiving, I pray it makes them richer, not dimmer. Not in the idea that, well, those blessings are so great. Well, what are my blessings? They're nothing. They're no big deal. What's the big? It should make them greater. It should make them shine because we stop and say those blessings, as small as they may be or as great as they may be, come from the one who loved you even when the cross was standing right in front of him. And it makes our greatest blessings even greater. For in the light of Jesus' love, it makes holy and elevates our stumbling efforts to follow him faithfully. So as you come to this table, as you go home to the other table, and as you come to this table, remember, and when he had given thanks, he gave thanks for you and gave himself for you. To God be the glory. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, on this Thanksgiving Day throughout history, there have been wise leaders and wise, um, wise words that have been shared which have stopped and acknowledged your gracious hand, that have made us pause, Lord, whether it is in the time of Moses or is the time of Jesus or in our own nation in which we are so blessed and which so often we take those blessings for granted. Lord, make us grateful. And as we sit around our tables today, giving thanks, we pray, Lord, that as we come to this table, we may recognize the thanksgiving which you have given, a thanksgiving to accomplish all your purposes on our behalf, to save us, to rescue us, 
and to redeem us to yourself. Lord, as you are thankful, may we be thankful for your great gifts to us. In the name of Jesus, amen.